my background. Mm -hmm. I grew up in S Seattle, Washington, both in the city and on an island near the city called Bainbridge Island. I'm the third of four children. Uh, I grew up spending a lot of my hours on the beach on Puget Sound, literally in little boats fishing, salmon fishing by the hundreds of hours, uh, water skiing, uh, working in my father's insurance agency. My little claim to fame when I was a teenager was I was at age 16, the youngest licensed insurance agent in the state of Washington. I never sold a policy, but my dad for years afterward renewed that insurance salesperson's license and letting me know that if I didn't like being a college professor, if it didn't work out, there was always a place for me back in the family business. I went to high school in the Seattle Public School System to college at Whitworth College in Spokane, where I was a pre-med chemistry major who took one psychology class in my first three years of college. I worked three years in a county hospital in Seattle. I took the medical college admissions test. I have completed my applications to medical school and never mailed them in. I decided I wanted to do something different. And then I decided maybe I'd be a college professor, but I needed something to profess. And uh, then I thought back to that one psychology class I had three years previous and how much I'd enjoyed it. And so almost on a lark, I decided to go into psychology. And so I took several more courses my senior year. And with my science background, was able to get into graduate school. I put down that I was interested in personality. And when I got to the University of Iowa, my mentor met me for the first time and said, uh, Dave, I know you said you're interested in personality psychology, but the person we have in that area just left. So we put you in social psychology. And that's the story of how I became a social psychologist. When I completed graduate school in the late 1960s, colleges were expanding and there were way more job opportunities than there were people to fill those jobs. And so I was in the fortunate situation of looking through the job file and picking which schools I wanted to apply to. And I chose just three colleges that were undergraduate student-focused colleges, such as the one I had attended and thrived at, to apply to and got interviews and job offers from all three and then picked this place called Hope, Hope College, uh, where I was going to plant myself for a time in the Midwest before my wife and I moved back to the dear Pacific Northwest where we have our roots. But once here, we planted deep roots, we formed connections, and I was supported in a way that enabled me to flourish in my teaching and my scholarship. And so we've just never had cause to leave. We've had opportunities to move back to the Pacific Northwest, after one of which I said to my wife, well, this is a pretty good opportunity. Should we look at this? We could go home. Oh, this is good. Or should we take out cemetery plots in the cemetery on 16th Street here in Holland, Michigan? And she said, go reserve the plots. Besides Holland, Michigan, where we live, there were two other places I love. One is the Pacific Northwest, where I grew up, and which I consider home to this day. I've tried to convince my children that they are really Northwesterners who just happen to have been uh, born and reared in Michigan. And secondly, Scotland, where we spent a sabbatical year in St. Andrews during the mid-1980s, and to which we return most summers now for a month. It's a working holiday. We travel a bit, but then we take a flat, which is what the, U the Brits call an apartment. Uh, in St. Andrews, I work out of the university library. I have a colleague there I'm very close to and with whom I've done some collaborative writing. And uh, we just enjoy a different pace of life. It's a more serene thing, and it's something to look forward to. When I'm in the dregs of, you know, kind of the mundane work in the middle of winter, I'm not a natural-born writer. I recall that in college, writing was my lowest grade in my college experience. And it's because I didn't see myself as a good writer that when I had these invitations to begin writing that I did several things. I started reading what I thought was great science writing and great nonfiction writing by people like Carl Sagan, C.S. Lewis, and others. I also read a number of writing manuals, such as Elements of Style, Simple and Direct, and such, to, to learn some of the principles of good writing. The third thing I did, and I think the most important, was I became mentored 
by an award-winning colleague who is a poet, essayist, and teacher uh, who has been Michigan's Professor of the Year and who has been my writing coach and mentor for uh, some years. I've now graduated, but he's been through some 5,000 manuscript pages of my writing, teaching me how to order words for emphasis, how to create rhythm. There, Dave, do you feel the rhythm here that's there versus this prior paragraph? Uh, I'm not sure, but keep telling me. I think you write when you have a passion to say something. Uh, what compels me to write is reading, and I read something that strikes me as, wow, so interesting or so poorly understood by people at large that they'd love to know about this, and I think I have something to say. Some people would say I'm boringly organized. <laughs> I, have a, I have a routine to my day that enables things to get accomplished. I say I'm consistent. <laughs> uh, but I get up about the same time every morning and go through the same routine and uh, um, play basketball every noon to keep physically fit and go out to tea every afternoon. I do a lot of work in coffee shops where I can get away from the computer and the distractions of email and the web in order to get things done. I don't see myself as incredibly efficient and productive, but you know, if you can make just a little progress every day towards some big life goal, you can accomplish more in a year than you might have thought possible, even though on a given day you may go home frustrated by how little you got done in that day. I find my joy where most people find their joys. I find my joy in work that gives meaning and focus and passion to my life. I mean, I feel like I'm able to talk to a lot of people about a subject that I find humanly significant and fascinating, and what better job could anybody have? Uh, I take joy in the close relationships of people that I work with. Uh, with my family members, my wife of more than 40 years, who I married while I was an undergraduate, uh, my three children, although they're scattered from Seattle to London, England right now. Uh, I take uh, meaning and purpose guided by a religious faith that compels me to focus on things outside myself and give me a sense of mission about discerning truth and trying to communicate truth as accurately as I can perceive it. Uh, I feel very blessed.